The first bill that I'm going to bring to this floor in just a little while will be in support of our dear, dear friend Israel. There's a new Speaker of the House in the U.S., and the first thing he does is send money to Israel. Because, why not? Why does Israel need even more money? To flatten more buildings in Gaza? The recent large pro-Palestinian protests in many European and American capitals showed once again a complete disconnect between the elites and their populations in the West. I suppose it did work for a while with the Ukraine war, when it was possible to see the Ukraine as the underdog, but now that people are supposed to cheer for a nation armed with all kinds of modern weapons against a bunch of kids with rocks or, well, terrorists with kites, it's not going so well. I think it was too much of a cognitive dissonance for most people to change from support the Ukraine to support Israel. Except perhaps for politicians who just do as they are told. I'm a prostitute! While many people in the West were protesting, their governments promised support and even more money. And it doesn't even matter if the supposedly elected leaders are right-wing or left-wing. Jordan Meloni was elected on a far-right platform, supposedly, and she increased immigration, supported Zelensky and NATO, and now went to Israel to hug Bibi. Exactly the same things that Biden, on the other side of the ocean and the political spectrum, also supports. Of course, neither Biden nor Meloni are real leaders. They are just puppets, actors. No one really believes anything they say or do is real. Their speeches are all ghostwritten. Just look at Meloni, supposedly a defender of the Catholic family, but she never even married her now ex-boyfriend and is now a single mother. But I do think there is something else going on beyond the headlines. While in the Russian-Ukrainian conflict there was a total blackout of information coming from Russia, and people had to be pro-Ukrainian, being pro-Russian was even criminalized in some countries, in the current conflict you are more or less free to choose which side to defend, and the division is expanding globally, as we have seen in the various protests. I think this is on purpose. I think they want to create more hatred and division, and even violence and terrorism chaos all over. It's all part of the plan. The media keeps talking about the West. The West says this, the West does that. But what is the West? The West today is, in many ways, an inversion of what it was once. Take for instance the Catholic Church, which used to be about maintaining tradition and now it's really about being into political and social causes and becoming almost indistinguishable from the left itself. And of course, Protestant churches are even worse. Or take art and architecture. Modern art and architecture are mostly ugly or weird or nihilistic, the complete opposite of what made the West to be admired and emulated all over the world. It is like invasion of the modest natures. Some other entity, an evil and perhaps supernatural presence, has been infiltrating into the West and turning it into its complete opposite. Even though it still has the same name and the same apparent institutions, inside it is not the same anymore. Or perhaps it was always so. Perhaps the so-called West always had a dual side, a devil and an angel, a dark side and a light side, like the two wolves from the Cherokee legend fighting each other. And for a while, the good side, or the good wolf, managed to keep control. But now, the dark side has totally taken over. It has taken over the West, and even some other non-Western countries too, such as Japan or Korea. But it's still not enough. It wants to take over the whole planet the whole universe. And perhaps it will. I am a 32nd degree Mason. I am imbued with confidence, trust, and responsibility, among other things. Yes, sir. You know what that is? No, sir. 